outside. And nature can be so refreshing and calming, so why not bring that inside? I want to talk to you about houseplants and how they can be a positive addition to your household. Now, I don't know if you have plants or not, but if you don't, you're probably thinking about something along the lines of, I don't have time to care for a plant, or I've had them in the past and I always end up killing them. Well, I want to tell you some of the benefits of having houseplants, some of the negatives that come, can come along with having some of these houseplants, and some species that are great for everybody. I personally have just gotten into plants, so I'm no expert, but some of the benefits that can, can come along with having houseplants are they can help purify your air through photosynthesis, they can help add humidity to your air because they only, they let off about 95% of the water that they actually take in. And this can help reduce the chances of you getting a respiratory disease. And with studies done by the Kansas State University and the Royal College of Agriculture, it's actually been proven that plants can help improve your health and even help you focus. Now, after listing all of those, I want to tell you some of the plants that actually do these things. Spider plants are great at purifying the air. English ivy are great at removing benzenes from the air. Boston ferns are great with humidity. And peace lilies can actually remove mold particles from your air. Of course, all these positives are great, but there are some negatives. Bugs were the first thing that came to my mind. Houseplants can get bugs, but there, after some research, there are a few plants out there that aren't susceptible to bugs or unlikely to get bugs. And even if you do end up getting bugs or you just really want to prevent them, there are products out there at your local garden store that you can get to help prevent or uh, get rid of bugs if you do end up getting them. Some plants are also toxic to pets and small children, so you definitely want to make sure when getting a plant, you know which ones are toxic and when, which ones aren't. I do have a few here that are toxic, and I do have a cat that absolutely loves to munch on my plants, so I do keep those away from her. But, of course, plants also need to be cared for, which is probably one of the biggest negatives that some people see. But there are some plants out there that do thrive on actually being forgotten or ignored. So after telling you all these negatives, I want to tell you about some of the species that are great for everybody. Like I mentioned, there are plants out there that actually thrive on being forgotten or ignored, like the ZZ plant. They are probably one of the best plants for beginners um, or people that often forget to water their plant because they can go months without watering and they're great in low light situations. So an office building would be perfect for them. There are also uh, plants out there that love water, like bamboo. You can actually stick it directly into a fish tank and it'll do fantastic. So if you do, you don't water too much or you water too much, you basically can pick from many species of plant that could either do great with no water or great with a lot of water. Lighting is also a common issue. A lot of people will buy a plant for decoration and not think about the lighting situation that it needs. There are a lot of plants out there that can have different lighting situations that all look very pretty. ZZ plants, as mentioned, are great for low light situations, so an office building, or if you live in a place that may be surrounded by buildings or doesn't get a lot of light, they're perfect, along with arrowhead plants who don't get a lot of, who don't need a lot of light either. Medium light plants are ones that like bright indirect sunlight. So a table that gets shined or sunned during the day um, is great for a fern, pathos, succulents, cactuses. So those could be great for decoration on a table. And there's of course plants that love to be put in a windowsill. The succulent called jade loves direct sunlight in a windowsill, and so do sunflowers. Now, after mentioning all these things, of course, we go on to size. A lot of people don't really take into consideration the size of a plant, or are too worried that they'll buy a plant that gets too big and they won't be able to accommodate it. Well, there's plants from all sizes, from monsteras that get huge to little bitty succulents. So, of course, sizing doesn't have to be too much of a worry. You can find pretty much any plant in any size. Color is also a great thing. Uh, plants can come in many variations, from light green 
yellow, just any pretty much any color. I even have one that's a purple over here. And flowers. Some can even produce flowers in your home. But if you're allergic to pollen, you might want to stay away from those. So after telling you a little bit about the benefits of having plants, the negatives of having plants, and some species that are great for everybody, I hope you learned a little something and maybe thinking about getting a plant to, for yourself because yes, they do require care, but they do give you things in return and they can help liven up a space. And in these times when we're all stuck at home, having a little friend may help keep you going and even if it's just to get you up and water it. 